the plugging in the number here, it's actually going to be easy. So let me do it that way. <laughs> and uh, and I, I think because the argument we are making here is can be quite abstract, I think it's uh, good to have confirmation that I'm uh, doing it right, that, um, that you know, it says the answers I put in are correct. So, so for this question, let me do it right on the screen here instead of copying it over. So it says, um, it says determine the electric flux through which closed the surface whose so cross section is shown below. Yeah, so what you have to be careful here is um, because you know, it's the challenge of representing three dimensional objects on a two dimensional plane. So you have to imagine the charges sitting in a three dimensional space and in that three-dimensional space, the closed surface that those loops you see are representing, you have to imagine this. Let me use S2 as an example. So this is a cross-section, meaning you have to almost imagine a cylindrical volume that extends above and below that loop that you see. So it basically, this uh, closed volume, the cylindrical volume here, it basically encloses anything that this loop enclosed charge wise. And you know, I'm just covering enough of space above that and enough of space below that to say, to be able to say that, um, to be able to say that I'm enclosing a charge. And what the question is asking is the net electric flux uh, through the entire closed surface. So I'm not um, just uh, talking about the loop. I'm not just talking about the top and bottom surfaces. I am talking about this entire surface that I've drawn. That, that fact matters because that's the only way you can apply Gauss's law, that it's the entire surface. Now, what doesn't matter is how big that surface actually is. This is the interesting thing about Gauss's law. It only relates, the, how much, relates to how much charge is enclosed the actual area of a surface that's enclosing doesn't end up mattering. If it's enclosing the same amount of charge, then if it's a smaller amount of surface, then the increase in electric field magnitude just exactly cancels out if it were a larger amount of surface. So, so let me go through this calculation quickly. So really what we are applying here is the basic statement of Gauss's law, which says that the net electric flux through a closed surface, which we represent with the symbol, is equal to the, the amount of charge enclosed. And uh, two different ways you can represent it, either amount of charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught, uh, which you can use, or the representation I prefer, uh, four pi times Coulomb constant times the charge enclosed. The reason I prefer this expression is, um, the Coulomb constant you can, uh, so you can definitely plug it in SI units. That's what we always do. But if, especially if you change the units, electrostatic has lots of different use, units that people use. Gaussian unit is a very popular, or used to be very popular one. I think it's a fallen out of use a bit in recent years, recent meaning like 20, 30 years. <laughs> when you change units, well, if you had the expression written in this way, it's much easier to change units because all you have to change is one number, you plug it in here. If it's Gaussian units, I just plug it in, this equals one. That's what Gaussian units dictates. If it's a, a SI unit system, then I plug in, uh, then I plug in uh, the Coulomb constant is equal to one over four pi epsilon. Now. Anyway, so, so let me use this representation here. And basically with each part of the exercise comes down to counting the amount of charge in it. Because once I've counted the amount of charge, that'll give me Q enclosed. Once I have Q enclosed, I simply multiply this to it. And that gives your answer. It's uh, almost too, too simple, <laughs> but that is the correct approach. So flux through S1, that's this whole big loop that encloses everything. So let me add up all the charges. Uh, plus, so four plus four Q, uh, minus the four Q, add them all up, they add up to zero. So net flux will be zero. Now it doesn't mean that the electric field 
along on these surfaces is zero. You can clearly see from this uh, distribution that electric field closer to this portion is going to be pointing into the surface. Electric fields closer to this portion will be pointing out of the surface. So there is a very interesting electric field distribution. But as far as the net flux goes, they add up to zero. And the best way to gain an intuition about that is imagine drawing the electric field lines. We went through that on Wednesday. So flux through S1, net flux is zero. Flux through S2, okay, looking at, it just encloses that minus two Q. So that ought to be four pi times the Coulomb constant times minus two Q. I mean, I can simplify, but I, I think it's fine. It, the system will handle it. Um, flux through, let me erase the box. I don't know what that's boxing. Flux through S3 uh, is the uh, surface that closes just the charge plus Q. Now the surface does go very near this negative charge. Doesn't matter. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> what kind of charges are placed outside doesn't affect the net flux. One way you can imagine is um, any electric field that's pointing towards this negative charge, well, it had to enter this surface somewhere and then go out. So they add up, to, those two contributions add up to zero. So with that, flux through S3 is um, the numerical coefficient in front, oops, um, times the charge Q. That's it, flux through S4 that includes both of the negative charges. So it's going to be 4 pi times Coulomb constant times uh, minus 4 Q. Again, I can simplify. I don't think I have to. Flux through S5. S5, let's look here. That, okay, rectangle, trapezoid looking thing. Includes only 1 minus 2 Q. So oh, it's going to be the same thing as S2 just numerically speaking. So let me copy and paste. <laughs> um, flux through S6. Okay, that surface, I look through the shape, it only encloses plus 3Q. So that should be it. Uh, 4 pi Coulomb constant times uh, 3Q. And you see how I'm sometimes putting the, the the multiplication mark sometimes not. All those are fine. It uh, the the question type is able to handle all those different ways of representing. So no. so you know, don't worry too much about the spaces. Uh, the system understands implied multiplication. So yeah, so that's it. It's uh, almost too too simple, which is why I want you to do it here. And it really is about Gauss's law and what Gauss's law says. And uh, it's a uh, you know, it is abstract and not quite intuitive. And um, <laughs> that's, that's why uh, what I keep emphasizing uh, in this week that the material we are covering is highly mathematical.